Hello and welcome to Mule Studio tutorial. In this video we'll show you how to configure Twitter Cloud Connector with Mule Studio and how to use most common operations. Also, from time to time we'll be checking how changes are affected on our Twitter account. In order to build and run this example you will need a Twitter account and some basic Twitter data setup, like a retweet from a user you are following and a tweet with a mention. Also, you will need to create an application on Twitter developer site in order to generate necessary security tokens to authenticate the connector. You will need to download and install Mule Studio and since we will be using HTTP inbound endpoint you will need a browser to execute requests and view response messages. First we need to create a Twitter application on a Twitter developer site. Go to dev.twitter.com under my applications, click create new application, populate the fields and hit create your Twitter application button. Then go to the settings page and change access level. Then update Twitter application settings. Go back to details page and hit create my access token button. That will generate necessary credentials for Twitter connector. These are four security tokens we will need to use inside the Mule Studio. Now we are ready to start with our new Mule project. Go to Mule Studio, under File New, select Mule Project, give it a name, and then hit the Next button. Flow has the same name here. Click Next and then click Finish. Then let's add those security tokens we just created on a Twitter application. Go under Source, Main, Application, Mule App Properties Filed, and create key value pairs for those access tokens. Now let's create Twitter global element. Open Twitter demo flow, go to the global elements tab, hit create button, filter for Twitter and select Twitter cloud connector and then hit OK button. Populate the fields with mule property placeholders with the keys from our properties file and then hit OK button. Now let's create one new flow to retrieve user information for our authenticated Twitter account. Go back to Message Flow tab, on run head side filter for HTTP and drag HTTP inbound endpoint to the canvas. Double click on a flow to rename it, let's say Show User, hit OK button, then double click on HTTP endpoint and change path to Show User. This will be our HTTP endpoint. Hit OK, then filter for Twitter and drag and drop Twitter connector next to HTTP endpoint. Double click on it, change display name to Show User, change config reference to Twitter and change operation to the Show User. Then after hitting OK button, go back to filter on the right hand side and search for object to JSON and drag and drop object to JSON element next to our Twitter connector. Save your project. At any point you can see configuration XML on configuration XML tab. Now let's test this project to run the application. Right click on the flow, say run as mule application and in the console tab you'll see everything starting up and when it's ready it will show this started up Twitter demo message. Now let's go to our browser, go to localhost8081 show user and we should get a JSON response here. So here it is, you can see it. So we have a user ID, username and user screen name. These are the fields we'll be using in the following operations. OK, so let's see about tweeting and sending direct messages. So let's first do a Twitter status update. Go back to your Mule Studio on the Message Flow tab. Drag another HTTP endpoint to Canvas. Again, update flow name to update status.
then double click on HTTP element, change path to update status. Hit OK, then filter for Twitter, drag another Twitter Cloud connector next to the HTTP element, double click on it, change name to update status, again update config reference to Twitter, operation to update status, and populate this field with your tweet message, so let's say this is status message from Mule. Hit OK. Then again find object to JSON and drag it next to our Twitter element. Save your project and since it's already running you will see it will automatically restart itself, then go back to your browser, go to localhost 8081, update status URL, ok, so you see we have a JSON response with created at time and our text field, this is status message from you, so if we go to our Twitter account, we can see here it is our tweet from within Mule Studio. Ok, now let me show you a couple more of these Twitter service flows. As you can see I already added two more here to save some time. We have send direct messages by screen name and get user timeline by user ID. This screen name and user ID are the ones we got from our first flow, our show user flow. So if you double click on HTTP here on send direct messages by screen name, you see that the path is updated accordingly. And if you double click on Twitter connector, you see that operation we are using is say, send direct messages by screen name. This operation receives two parameters, message and screen name, so we are using new placeholders here to read header inbound message and header inbound screen name. So this will actually be our HTTP request parameters, message and screen name. So if you go to a browser, I have already executed that here. So you see we have a message parameter and screen name request parameter. So this is a response with that text, same as an inner request. If you go to Twitter, under direct messages, you can see new message, that's direct message with screen name. Next is get user timeline by user ID. So we have a HTTP setup to use get user timeline by user ID path as an endpoint and Twitter Cloud Connector is configured to use that same operation and we'll be reading user ID from our HTTP request in the same manner like in a flow before this one. So now if you go to your browser and execute that request with this user ID parameter, you see you get full user timeline as a JSON response and you would get the same result if we were to use screen name here instead of user ID parameter. That's all. Thank you for watching.